Makerere, here you come. Yeah. And and it's a six year course so as well? Five years. Five, year five course. years in mm -hmm. school and then you do one year internship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Is, it's like school work. Kind yeah. Of. yeah. Yeah. How was that period for you? Uh, Makerere was difficult. Mm -hmm. And uh, difficult in the sense that you come from high school, you're mm -hmm. the only person from your school yeah. that came to medical school. Mm -hmm. Uh, we are we are about 120 mm -hmm. in the class, and I was mm -hmm. the only person from my school. From your school, and then there were these um, people that came from other schools. Some mm -hmm. of the top schools in Uganda, you find there there are like 10 people from one school. There mm -hmm. are eight, there are seven, mm -hmm. there are six, mm -hmm. and you're the only person from your school. Mm -hmm. And all my classmates mm -hmm. were now doing other courses, mm -hmm. and medical school was in a different campus. So, yeah. like um, my social interaction with my classmates. It was very, very difficult. Yeah. I had come from a Catholic school, mm. very closed. Mm -hmm. So like social interactions were mm. tough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so like my first two years were horrible in yeah, medical school. I, I didn't have friends. I can imagine. I didn't have um, people I could feel like I was part of a group. Mm. At break time, mm. the people from this school would you know, stand together and they mm -hmm. start talking about mm. so and so and mm. who did what and who mm. did this and you're mm. sort of trying to, mm. you know, like um, fit in and uh, now I, I look back and I was like, medical school wasn't good because I struggled to fit in. Are there gender <clears> dynamics <throat> playing in at this time, given it's medical school? How many out, out of the 100 and you said 20? Yeah, 120. How many were female? I think the they were about maybe 40. All right, not so bad. Not so bad, okay. not so bad, yeah. All right, okay, okay, yeah. fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, I mean, that's progressive at the time to actually be, yeah. be pretty I think uh, the Uganda at that time had introduced the so-called 1.5. Mm -hmm. So the way they compute the the weights of the marks you need to get to university, they mm -hmm. get the subjects you did and mm -hmm. each subject has a weight, so mm -hmm. they multiply. Mm -hmm. As I've said, for medicine, physics, chemistry, biology, mm -hmm. the weight is three. Right. And then mathematics, was the weight was two. Mm -hmm. So they multiply the, mm -hmm. the marks you get by those weights mm -hmm. and then you get a certain score. Mm -hmm. So for all girls, all females, they added 1.5 points ah, to what score you got right. from the whichever course you're going to do. Right. So it's managed to pull um, several girls yeah. who didn't have qualified for certain courses. Yeah. It yeah. managed to like so, sort of push them over the yeah. line yeah. so they could qualify for That's a good know, different way to, courses. Yeah. For gender I think it's, equity. I think it's still there, I'm not sure. And they used to call us the 1.5 <laughs> doctors, mm. but I had qualified without it. Without still, it, yeah. Yes, yeah. I had qualified without yeah, it. Beautiful. But still, it um, for for some, I think there were some girls who yeah. went to medical school because of the 1.5. Yeah, it's a good qualified. It's yeah. a good way to <clears throat> bridge the gap. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fantastic. So, um, d despite the difficulty in social uh, <laughs> yeah. set setup, you pulled through academically. Yes. Um, I think uh, my kind of brain, I, it's, I, I absorb things. Like when somebody's teaching, I absorb things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I used to struggle a lot in high school to revise. So imagine I was doing four principles. Yeah. <laughs> so we'd get to school and immediately the first week people are reading, they are having trans nights, mm -hmm. you know, put your feet in cold water in the basin and read and read. And I'd be reading my novels. And people, actually my roommates used to hide my novel so I can read, wow. read something so that I can do exams. Mm. And I would tell them, if I don't retain something in class and I read it up, I won't retain it for longer than two weeks. So mm. I don't need to waste my time reading from day one mm. of class mm. because those things are going to leave my brain anyway. So mm. I, I focus in class, I retain a lot of what I'm taught in class. Mm. When exams are near, I just go and brush up a few things here mm. and there. Mm. And then I just go into the exam. That's very unique. Now, then I go to medical school. Mm. I think the first year, there was a book which was about this big. Actually, the books were like this big. Mm. Wow. So I, I, I got there and it was like... Um, culture shock. Not a culture shock. I expected it. But then medical school was not... Our degrees were not ranked. Mm. It wasn't like you can get a first class in medicine. Mm. So I was like, okay, I don't need a first class. So why do I need to? I don't need to do anything beyond me getting a 50%, which was the first mark. Mm. So I'll do what it takes to get mm -hmm. a 50%. Mm. And so I got I got my 50s, my mm. 55s here mm. and there, I don't know, 60 here and there. Mm. Many times I look back and I was like, that was stupid to do that. <laughs> but then um, 
yeah, it was tough, but it was, it was manageable. Mm. Yeah, mm. as I've said, the books mm. were huge. Mm. So you'd sit in class and um, internalize as much as you can. Mm. When it comes to revise, as I, I carried over the same habits, I would mm. start revising two weeks before mm. exams. Mm. By the time I'm through the anatomy book, mm, exactly. the biochemistry book, <laughs> the biochemistry book is waiting, yeah. and the exams are like two days away. I've spent two weeks reading anatomy, and yeah. I know biochemistry is yeah. two days away. I say, okay, mm. um, this is weird, but I would close the book, open it, and read whatever right. page is open. Oh. <laughs> then when I finish that chapter, I close it, I open it again and read that whichever chapter That is very open. interesting. <laughs> and then just march into an exam. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a very interesting way to do it. I, I, it's yeah. a habit you'd acquired when you are. Um, yes. I, I, don't, I don't think there would be any other way because if I started from page one, I would never finish. Obviously, so I yeah. just I mean, with books that size, you wouldn't. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I, I I floated through medical school really, yeah, yeah. and um, the clinical the clinical years were good mm. because now you could go. You love the practice. And I love the practice. You mm. could go and interact with patients, and mm. we do. We call mm. it clacking. You mm. clack a patient. Mm. You read about different diseases. Mm. So I did very well in the clinicals, mm. Uh, mm. but then mm. the first the, the preclinical. Yeah. Yeah. And clinical comes in your final third year. Third year. Third year. Yeah. Yeah. So from that point, you felt like your yeah. That was it. Was uh, it was much more yeah fun. Yeah. 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 And um, and do you ha do you have particular experiences during either your clinical practice? Uh, uh, your cl 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 you call it clinical 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 yeah. Uh, that that begin to shape you or to shape your desire to maybe practice more, be do be a medical officer or do something. Mm. I I I don't think so really. Mm -hmm. I I can look back and I don't feel like there was those moments of mm. um, that were so profound. Mm. I think I was already there. Mm. But then um, maybe the preclinical years, mm. anatomy. Okay, for those who don't know, mm. uh, you get to anatomy class. And you have to dissect mm. the cadaver. Mm. People, do you know what a cadaver is? <laughs> so cadavers are dead people, mm. basically. Mm. And I think for me, one thing which I remember is asking myself, who are these people? Mm. Because there's a dead body there and you start dissecting it. Mm. And it's a very intense way of understanding the human body. Mm. Like if I take this arm, you have to know where the muscles, where the bones, where the nerves, where the blood vessels, how do they, you know, which muscle crosses, which blood vessel, which nerve goes where. You start like literally from the fingertip mm. and you dissect mm. everything mm. until there's just mm. bits of a mm. person mm. left. Mm. So for me, that was something which, um, in a way, I used to ask myself, who are these people? Mm. Mm. That's something which is quite mm. Um, mm. like uh, even now I ask myself who are those who people? Is the person who are those table? people that um, were mm. cadavers that mm. were being dissected mm. by, med by medical students? Mm. But then um, in clinical practice itself, mm. really it was the kind a kind of power that you felt mm -hmm. that there is a certain science mm. that you you're able to connect the dots and able to. Um, it's almost like an internal algorithm mm. in your brain. Mm. You're able to connect the dots and say, this person, this mm. is the issue. Mm. So there were those moments where you felt like, oh my God, I got it right. Mm. Because as a clinical student, mm. uh, third year, fourth year, fifth year, mm. you're given patients, mm. you clerk them. That's mm -hmm. what we call mm. them. You clerk. Mm -hmm. um, of course, I think things have changed mm. because by then they used to tell us that um, once you take the history mm -hmm. of the person, yeah. you would 90% of the time, come up with a diagnosis. Mm. Then the rest of the 10% was through doing x-rays mm. and blood tests mm. and you know all that. So mm. clinical examination, clinical history and examination, you could mm. get 90% of what was likely mm. to be the problem. Then mm. the rest, you add it up by mm. doing all this stuff. Mm. So it was a very interesting thing of um, just listening. Okay, so what is the problem? I have a cough. How mm. long have you had a cough? Mm. I've got for this long. Mm. and you have chest pain mm. the, the, it's like you have a checklist in your head mm. and being able to ask the right questions mm. and in your mind you'd feel like some kind of thrill mm. and this must be pneumonia mm. Mm. and then you put your stethoscope and there's pneumonia mm. like mm. okay great so it's a it's an exciting thing of yeah. like having an algorithm in your mm. head mm. that's how medicine works mm. Mm. And so it would always be good to get it right mm. um, as a student and then uh, we used to have these uh, lecturers coming they used to call them ward rounds mm. 
and they come and they put you on the spot. Mm. So those moments when you're able to remember stuff from mm. anatomy, from, mm. I don't know, mm. pharmacology mm. and put them, mm. those were great. Mm. And so medical school was, was good from mm. that perspective mm. of seeing the future, like, mm. um, okay, at some point I'll be there mm -hmm. saving lives mm. because I can mm. listen That's really to awesome. somebody's story. Mm and mm. connect the dots mm. and come up with the and right. have a Eureka moment for them. Yes, for, not just individual. the diagnosis, mm. but the treatment. The treatment. Yes. And, and potentially <coughs> save, save a life. Potentially save a life. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So that's, that's really amazing. Yeah. Yeah.